Welcome to Frontline News from the University of Maryland School of Medicine News Center. I'm Larry Roberts. Coming up, a new dean takes the helm in August. But first, the University of Maryland is the first in the state to use robot-assisted surgery to transplant a kidney from a living donor. The minimally invasive technology enables smaller incisions to perform the transplant, leading to faster recovery times, less pain, and fewer complications. It gives a huge advantage for patients. The patient goes home early. They have a very small scar, about six to seven centimeters, in comparison to patients who were having open traditional cut surgery where the incision was about 15 to 20 centimeters. Patient goes home on a day three, recover much quicker. They go back to their work much, much sooner than the, traditionally they would have done it. So far, 10 robot-assisted kidney transplants have been performed. The technology improves a surgeon's precision by making it easier to see and work in tight spaces. The, the vision is so good that we can see the stuff which we would traditionally not see with the robotic smaller vessels. We can see it. Every single suture we place, we can see it. The vision is good. Um, it's extension of human hand. We can reach to the places which would be hard to reach otherwise. It has definitely a huge advantage to getting into a smaller places to make the surgery much more easier for a surgeon. The technology will reduce the risk of complications for obese patients. If an obese person needs this large incision to get a kidney transplant, with the robotic technology, the incision is this small because we just make this much incision, put the kidney in and do the surgery. And these patients have a huge advantage. There is a wound infection. The risk of wound infection is almost zero. Thank you. Robotic techniques are expected to increase the number of patients eligible for kidney transplants. Dr. Mark Gladwin has been appointed the next dean of the University of Maryland School of Medicine. In a campus town hall, Dr. Gladwin said he plans to break down silos and encourage clinical and research partnerships. First, I just want to take a moment to say that I'm a big believer in supporting independent science and scientists. That our greatest success is supporting individuals, their commitment to K-funded science, R01-funded science, clinical trials-funded science, and we need to work to break down barriers to their success and make their work more efficient. I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Gladwin to the School of Medicine and to pass the baton of leadership to him. In fact, the School of Medicine is in a very strong position right now. And so it provides a perfect opportunity for a new leader to come in and to continue the forward momentum. And in fact, to raise the school to even greater heights. I wish him all the very best in this new and exciting opportunity. A leading heart, vascular, and lung specialist, Dr. Gladwin will take the helm on August 1st. Dr. Sharon Hoover has returned following a trip to Poland to help Ukrainian refugee children. We met with community workers, and then we also met with a lot of schools, so school leaders and uh, educators, both in Lublin, which is over on the very far east side of Poland, and then also in Warsaw. And as you might imagine, the schools there are receiving thousands of children and trying to figure out how to best support them, how to best educate them. So we did a lot of work on refugee mental health. Dr. Hoover says the children are doing the best they can under the circumstances. Kids are kids. They, they did great. They were curious. They were engaged. Uh, at the same time, we know that they're suffering. And when we hear directly from the parents about things like they're having nightmares at night, they're having a really difficult time integrating into school. Um, you know, the parents are trying to figure out, should I even send my child to Polish schools? Will we be going back to Ukraine? Is it going to be more difficult if I do send my child to school? So there's a lot of uh, strife right now that families are trying to cope with. One of the schools that hosted us to do some of the teacher training uh, held a concert that night, really in celebration of the Ukrainian families that had come to their community. And the students all dressed up in both Polish colors and Ukrainian colors. And uh, they did singing and music, um, really kind of a celebration of peace and unity. Uh, and it was incredibly heartwarming. And that's Frontline News. I'm Larry Roberts. We'll see you again in two weeks.